The Untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, make sure you guys definitely take the time to like and subscribe to this video and subscribe to the channel, man, because we're pumping out world-class boxing content on the daily, so please bless yourself with that. But listen, man, um, a fight got announced, and I'm, I, I think it's a good matchup. It's a bit of a weird matchup considering the, the circumstances, but... December the 12th, say the date. December the 12th, say the date. Because Nonito Donaire, the Filipino Flash, one of the living legends in the sport of boxing, will be making his return to the ring as he takes on the very young, very game, and very formidable Raymar Caballo. Now, I'm very familiar with Raymar Caballo. I've been following Raymar Caballo for about three years, going on four years. I, I, you know, The first time I seen Raymar Caballo fight was when he fought Stefan Young in a, on a card in South Florida. And uh, that was my first introduction to him. And he's an explosive fighter, can really punch. Um, and he's not someone that you want to really get into an exchange with. Now, I'll say this. On the one hand, with this fight, I'm happy that the fight's happening because it's an all-Filipino fight. So there's going to be a lot of pride on the line. These guys are going to come to give it their best because they don't want to lose to another fellow Filipino. They want to have bragging rights. Um, I think Donaire is going to come to exchange and deliver heavy shots and it'll be a fight. And we know what Caballo is coming to do. He's coming to do the same thing. You know, he's 24 no, 20, 20 knockouts for a reason. But on the other hand, I'm kind of a bit frustrated because as much as I like Raymar Caballo, he clearly, and when I say clearly, I mean he clearly lost to Emmanuel Rodriguez last year. He got absolutely taken to school by Emmanuel Rodriguez, and he got the gift decision, one of the biggest gift decisions of last year. It was really, really bad. And now uh, it's unfortunate what happened to Rodriguez. He truthfully in a fair and just world Emmanuel Rodriguez will be getting the rematch with Gabao and maybe if you know win lose or draw win lose or draw I want to see Emmanuel Rodriguez get a rematch against Gabao because he, he turned in a career best performance and he got an L on his record so it was it was really a shame to see but we can't cry over spill milk we have to focus on the, on, on the task at hand now it's a good fight stylistically I think it's a barn burner because you're talking about two Filipino um, hard Filipino punchers and you're talking about a fight that's going to be taking place at the StubHub Center or now, now they call it the Dignity Health Sports Park but you know you, you, got, you guys know what I'm talking about two guys that come to fight from the Philippines fighting at, at, at one of boxing's war grounds because every time there's a fight at the, at the Dignity Health Sports Park or formerly known as the, the StubHub Center it's always a war you know some of the best wars in boxing have been at that at arena you know from uh, Francisco Vargas to I think was a, was it Orlando Salido? I think it was Orlando Salido. Um, there's that fight. There's Matisse versus um, John Molina. That was that was there. You know, there's been a lot of top fights that have happened there. A lot of wars, not just fights, but wars, absolute wars. Um, so with that being said, you know, I expect this to be no different. You know, and and. The way I see this fight ending, I'm being, I'm being honest with you, Gabayal is very strong and very explosive, so I, I could see him as a younger fighter getting Donaire up out of there because, you know, Donaire is old, and when, when you when you get to his age and you've been as many in many fights as he's been in and as many training camps as he's been in, you know, at some point your body begins to become shop worn and there's a lot of miles in the odometer and, and it don't take much to get you out of there, so. Donaire had a fighter in there last time at Ubali who was physically strong, but I don't think Ubali had the skill to land on a Donaire. Gabao is a, a little bit quicker. He's younger. He's fresher. You know, this is a more dangerous fight to me than the Ubali fight, even though Ubali was a champion and Ubali was looked at in higher regard in comparison to Gabao. Gabao, I think he'll come in. I think I think he'll come into this fight with a lot to prove because. You know, his last fight against Emmanuel Rodriguez, I mean, when, when I say he got schooled, he got schooled. It was bad. It was one of the wor it was the was one of the biggest gift decisions of 2020. Um, but sometimes, as crazy as it sounds, because life, life works in, the, in mysterious ways, the same way God works in mysterious ways. Sometimes a, a fighter getting a gift decision and getting a lot of criticism from the public might be the best thing to happen to their career because they come to, they come to the next fight with a lot of uh, a lot more determination, a lot more intensity, and that's and that's 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 what I'm fully expecting from Raymar Caballo. I'm fully expecting him to go in there against you know his senior in Donaire, who's 39 years old, who's got a lot of miles on the odometer, and um, yeah, I really think I really think. Uh, He'll 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 put up, he'll put up his best fight. And look, right now it's a beautiful time to be a bantamweight. If you're Filipino and you're a bantamweight, because you got Gabayo, Donaire, and you got Casimiro. So maybe the winner of this fight 
fights Casemiro. I know that this fight was, uh, that Donaire had an agreement to fight Casemiro, and then he pulled out because Casemiro said some things about his wife, and then there was a back and forth on social media with Casemiro's manager, Sean Gibbons. But look, I think cooler heads will, pre will prevail at some point, whether uh, if Donaire wins the fight, I think the, I think the Casemiro fight in the Philippines and for the Filipino people was too big to not make happen. And if not, I, I if he doesn't beat Gabayo, I think Gabayo will fight anybody. And I think Gabayo will be fight, fighting uh, uh, Casemiro. So either way, there's great possibilities, endless possibilities and endless great matchups in the Super Bantamweight division. But yeah, save the date, December the 11th, uh, Donaire returns to the ring against Raymond Gabayo, taking on another uh, younger, strong fighter in the Bantamweight division. He, he, he fought Ubali last time, who was looked at to be a threat to him. I didn't really think he was much of a threat. I thought Donaire was always going to piece him up, and he did. And uh, this is another fight where I think if Gabayo is not on his piece of cues, you know, he's shown himself to be a very hittable fighter, as Rodriguez showed us. He gets caught one of them Donaire left hooks, and, you know, he's going to be on the canvas. He'll get he'll get the Stefan Young treatment. So, you know, should be a good fight. I, I, I expect good entertainment come December the 11th, and we'll definitely be live for that fight. Uh, no doubt about it but you guys let me know what you think in the comments down below make sure you take the time to subscribe and like i say in every single one of these videos you can love me or you can hate me but i'm just kidding from daniel so until next time take care guys